Hey everybody! Okay, so today's the testimony one. I'm kind of excited about it because, like, I love sharing, you know, stuff about God. So this is, like, personal what happened with me in the beginning. And, um, so without further ado, alright, so I was, um, raised in a Christian household. I was taught, um, about Jesus and God my whole life, so I had no doubt that he existed or that what the Bible said was true and um so that's you know, that's how I was raised and that's what I believed and um my dad would he used the scripture in Proverbs that says, Train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it and um so, you know, as I got older I continually I, I saved with that and um do I think that he did the right thing? Yeah, I I do. I think that um, raising children in the faith is wise, but that's an, another thing for another time. Um, but anyway, so I, uh, whenever I was eight years old, it was uh, April 4th, 1999. It was Easter Sunday. And um, we just got back from main service, and we went on a picnic with our employees. And um, it was our family and them, and it was a couple with two kids, a four-year-old boy and a baby. I don't remember how old the baby was, probably like less than a year, maybe a year or something like that. He wasn't um, too old. And uh, my brother was four at the time. And um, so... Of course, whenever you have children, um, they, like, well, most kids love to go swimming. And um, there was a creek right beside this church. So we asked our parents, hey, can we go swimming, please? And so they let us go swimming. And it wasn't until afterward that we realized that our um, we didn't pack any extra clothes. And even though our, our houses were just a couple miles away, you know, nobody goes on this road that this old church was at, and, um, so mom's like, well, we can just let the guys run around in their underwear, and Desiree will make a makeshift shirt, so she took a Walmart bag, cut off the bottom of it, and, um, so that was my makeshift shirt, and I was, like I said, I was eight, and, um, so I went to this church, because, um, it was an old-style one, like, I don't even know how old this church was, but it's really, really old, and, um, so they like had like uh probably like a dozen pews like six on each side maybe fourteen I don't really know it was an even number going down um just two sets then they had a uh, a pulpit with like windows behind the pulpit and uh, then they had a door on the right side of the pulpit and um, so. They had an outhouse, like, across the road, and uh, so if that gives you any indication of how old this is, you know, and do keep in mind, we're kind of out in the hills um, up in northeast Arkansas, so it was, it, it's the hillbilly sort of thing also. Um, but anyway, my dad had just came into the church and, like, had just done some, like, dramatic singing or something like that. And, uh, uh, show, um, uh, kind of showing us the acoustics and stuff like that. And, like, cause it echoed. And, uh, so you really didn't have to have a microphone because of the way that the acoustics were, like, the way that the ceiling was curved and stuff like that. It made it to where the, uh, you could just talk and it gave excellent acoustics. But anyway, so my brother just, uh, my brother and JJ had, uh, who was the other four year old, he had just, uh, they just ran out the door playing tag or something. And, um, I was like, don't run in church. No, you're not supposed to run in church. They just ignored me and kept going. And, uh, cause I, I was the bossy older one, of course. And, um, so I went up to the pulpit and saw that there was this Bible. Okay. I've been there a couple times since cause it's like, it's a very sweet memory. Um, but I've not seen the Bible since. It was like, whoa. And it was one of those Bibles that was hard to read because of how pretty it was. Like, it was like cursive handwriting, like really cursive handwriting. And, or not really handwriting. I think it was print, but it was it was extremely hard to read font, I should say, and um, because of how pretty it was and like the 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 um 
the character that was the initial um, letter for the chapter, it was like, it had a picture of like, I remember the first word was an E and it had like a, like, um, a little guy on it and stuff like that. And so it was really cool. And I, I look at it and then all of a sudden I had this deep longing and I was like, is this what I think this is? Cause like whenever you reach the age of accountability, um, there's this hungering feeling, um, this emptiness that you just, there's just, just this longing, something that needs to be filled. And so you, like some people search their whole lives not knowing what it is. And I, being raised in a Christian household, I knew what that was. And um, it was the desire to ha- like to have, to know God and to have a relationship with him. And so I was like, God, I'm sorry for everything I've done. Because, um, like, and you're like, well, what, what could little kids do? Well, think about it. They lie. And lying, lying was bad. And I was disobedient and dishonoring to my parents. And, you know, there was a, there's quite a bit of other stuff. And you're, it's like, oh, well, that's not that bad. That's two of the commandments that God's, like, two of the great, like, the Ten Commandments that everyone looks at. You know, yeah, I was old enough to know I was doing wrong. And so I was like, I'm sorry for that. It's like, please forgive me. And I just, I put, like, all that I had in me. I'm like, I'm so sorry. And, like, please just be with me always. Please come into my heart. And then all of a sudden there was this feeling like relief and joy and it's kind of like someone takes a blanket and just covers you up in it on a very cold day. It was just an amazing feeling. And um, so it's it's one of those things, you'll, you, whenever you experience it, you understand. But it's hard to explain otherwise. Um, but I was like, I was just so excited. And so I just ran outside like... No one was in the building with me, so I had to tell somebody. And so I did the very thing that I told my brother not to do. I ran through church, and I ran outside. And I um, I was like, Mom, Dad, I just got saved. Like, I, I yelled it out. And they're like, oh, that's awesome. Everybody gave a round of applause, like my family and their employees and all that other stuff. And Mom was like, okay, it's time for lunch. And so... Like, we had sandwiches and chips and stuff, and I'm thinking, well, why? Okay, that's awesome that they're getting around the pause and everything, but is that it? And um, Mom had explained to me later that whenever I was younger, I would, like, every couple days or a couple weeks or whatever, I'd be like, oh, I just got saved today. And she's like, well, that's nice, because she didn't want to discourage me, but she didn't think it was time. And whenever, after that point, I kept going back to that. She's like, oh, she really was. And, um... I wanted to be baptized, but she wouldn't let me be baptized until she had, um, like, was for sure that I was saved. And so on April 25th, I think, it was either 25th or 28th, um, we went down to a little bit further down the creek. And uh, it was the one, this time it was by our house instead of by the um, by the place where I got saved. And uh, I was baptized in the creek when I was nine because my birthday was between the two. And, um, so that's, like, April's awesome for me, because I got saved in April, birthdays in April, baptized in April, you know, it's all really awesome. Um, but, um, later, I, um, I was able to, God was able to, um, give me chances to grow, and, uh, so... I will elaborate more on that another time, um, but I just wanted to share with y'all my personal testimony of whenever I had accepted Christ, or more like put my faith in Christ, because accepting Christ into your heart, that's a little, I may elaborate on that a little later also, but um, it's, if, if y'all are curious how to be saved, if y'all want to have a personal relationship with God, you first must repent, and that's siding with God saying, yes, you're right, I am a filthy rotten sinner who deserves to go to hell, and it, siding with him, saying that he is correct, 
And then you must put your faith and trust in God um, that he will do what he says he is. And, like, trust that um, he has your back and that he will help you with your battles. And trust that his will is right. And essentially take all that you are and just give it to him. And because... Once you have become saved, you are now his servant and his slave. And I got to say, I wouldn't want to be anything else because being a slave for God, it's really hard, but it's totally worth it. Like, there's a lot of things that you'll go through, and it's just like, you can see that the only way that you were able to go through was because he was your strength. And um, so, yeah, so that's if you... Um, have any questions or whatever, just feel free to ask me. Um, I'll probably be elaborating more on the growth and stuff later. But, uh, so yeah, so till next time, see you later. <laughs>